Hi, and welcome to this episode of Model Railroaded here on Film Crate Media. This episode, we're going to talk about track, how I laid it out, what the next step is, and what my plan is from here on out. I know in the last episode I mentioned we were going to do wiring today, but I haven't gotten that far this week, so we'll save that for another episode. Let's get started. All right, so this is the rear section of the layout. I'm, I'm calling it the rear because it used to be the back of where the old layout used to be. And here are my two main lines, track one, track two. And right here on track one, I have an 036 manual switch leading into a five inch Lionel transition piece, which I'm going to take out the pins and switch them out for Gargrave's pins because this is a Gargrave's uh, gantry crane track. This is gonna be like a junkyard area. It's gonna have all kinds of metal and stuff I can pick up, put down with a magnet. And I have a choice of three bumpers here. I have the classic Lionel post-war bumper with the light, a nice sturdy metal bumper. Next we have a Atlas O. Um, I, I like this bumper the most. It's more realistic looking. It's nice, compact, small, something I'd expect to see in a junkyard. And then finally we have a Lionel plastic, more modern style bumper. Uh, it, it almost looks like something you'd see on a main line, not so much a junkyard. So uh, I, I think the Atlas bumper is the one I'm gonna go with here. Now the problem is with the Gargraves track versus the Lionel fast track is, as you can see, it's about a eh, quarter inch too, sh uh, too short. So what I have to do is either I'm going to put a, some kind of baseboard down to elevate the track, which would probably be the better idea, or I'm just gonna use uh, ballast and actually bring that up using just the ballast and uh, a little bit of glue. And then of course I'm going to ballast the track to match the fast track. Now I have two of these along the main uh, two crossover sections so I can actually get a train from track one to track two without actually having to pick up the train. This is the second of the two crossovers. We have main two over here, main one over here. And what I have going on over here is we have a lead going into a yard. It's actually sort of a runaround kind of thing where it actually goes all the way down. It's going to go through a tunnel, around the corner, and connect back with main two on the other side. And what I'm going to have up here is right about here, just before the tubular section, I'm going to have the mountain coming through, tunnel portal, and then a single tunnel portal for this track, and then another tunnel portal way back here, where that one's going to come out of the tunnel. As you can see, I have a few shims laid out here. This piece is actually just a hair too, uh, just a hair too low. i got to raise it up about a quarter inch, so i got to pop some screws out, put those shims back in, it'll be good to go. Everything you see here is actually temporary. This is just to see how everything fits, how everything's gonna roll, and you know, if I, if I need to cut something or if I need to replace a piece of track, I know what to replace, where I need, where I need what. Well, remember that piece I talked about in the first episode about the chunk in front of the water heater? Well, here it is, pretty much finished exactly where I want the track to go. As you can see, I have the spacing of the track just so where I can break it right on the seams. I move a piece of the table next to it down just enough so I can separate the track. And then I can move this small piece down to separate the track on the yard side and it can come right out. Over on this end of the layout, uh, on the track I actually have one of the uh, fluorescent lights I have to clean up and uh, I'm actually going to mount that somewhere on the layout. I'm not exactly sure where yet, but uh, that actually used to be one of my dad's fish tank lights, and it's just been sitting in the attic, so I'm going to put that to use for the first time in over 20 years. So uh, we'll see about that. And as you can see, I have another siding here, and that's going to go right into about here. And uh, from there, it goes right into the curve, onto the uh, other section where we started. Here's what I like to call the Clearance Express. I'm using these cars specifically as tools, not just model rail cars, but I'm using them as tools to measure clearance on curves, height, and on the straightaway as far as width and uh, height is concerned on the straightaways. 
The uh, center beam car with all the wood on it, I'm using that for overhang on the curves, making sure everything is as far away as possible because right now my goal is I want to run my big boy on either track, one or two. So I don't have to run it on any particular track, I don't have to worry about it. Right now the only track that I would have to be worried about anything running on is the runaround because those are sharper curves than anything else on the layout that and the switch going into the uh, scrap yard but since that's just going to be cars going in there I don't have to worry too much. The extended vision caboose uh, of course that's a wider car all I would have to do is add about maybe a quarter inch to the width of that and uh, I wouldn't have to worry on a straightaway. And then finally the intermodal car uh, of course that's for height and as you can see I had to jack up the bridge uh, with a piece of foam on each side just enough uh, that gets me just enough clearance so the uh, intermodal cars can get under it. The next step in the process is to tear down the track because like I said this is temporary just to see where everything fits, how it fits and where it should go. And uh, I did actually put something together in SCARM to uh, just, see, just keep track of what pieces go where. I didn't care if it fit together in SCARM or not. I didn't, I didn't care if it was going to fit together perfectly or not, because some spots I did have to move the track over and whatnot, but SCARM, it's a computer program, it doesn't, it doesn't take into account scooching over the track just to have like an eighth inch more just to get it to fit. So I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching Model Railroaded here on Film Crate Media. Catch you later.